Hey, I'm Dr. Ax and welcome to Transformation TV. Today I'm going to be talking about circadian rhythms and sleep. And you may have heard the term circadian rhythms before, but it's all about the process of your body and how your body is in tune to your entire environment. And so if it's light out, if it's dark out, if you're in a certain environment, it actually affects the way your organs functions and affects the way you sleep. And so we're going to go through sleep and circadian rhythms today. I want to start off with talking about sleep though. The average person should be getting eight to ten hours of sleep a night. And for some people that may even seem like a lot because a lot of us sleep around five to seven hours a night. A recent research study came out and they said if you sleep less than seven hours a night, your chance of getting sick with a cold or flu goes up by 300 percent. So if you're not sleeping, that's going to cause you to get sick faster than anything. So you've got to get some good quality sleep. So whether you're a good sleeper or a bad sleeper, let's get into this. Let's talk about what can interfere with your sleep patterns. One thing is if you're vitamin and mineral deficient, specifically if you're deficient in magnesium, vitamin D, or omega-3 fats, it will cause sleep deprivation. Number one thing though is magnesium. So if you're having a lot of trouble sleeping, you can actually try supplementing with a, a magnesium-calcium combo or just a plain magnesium. Typically 300 to 500 milligrams a day of magnesium will help you sleep better. Also doing omega-3 fats like cod liver oil and vitamin D, also very important for sleep patterns because omega-3 fats and vitamin D help balance out your hormones, which is very, very important. One other thing, exercise. If you are not exercising, it'll affect your sleep. Even if you just do five minutes of exercise a day or get out and walk for 10, 20 minutes, it will help your body sleep. Sometimes when you're laying there in bed, your body's saying to itself, I didn't move all day, I didn't exercise, and that will slow off your, uh, your, your sleep patterns. One of the big reasons for that though is while you sleep, your body balances hormones. Also while you exercise, your body balances hormones. So when you're exercising, your body starts producing a hormone called serotonin. It's known as your good mood hormone. And so your body starts uh, you know, really balancing out and, and flooding out all these neurotransmitters, which your body expects to be done every day. And if that doesn't happen, it will throw off your hormones while you're sleeping. And so exercise is also very important when it comes to sleep. Also, making sure you're in a cold environment. If it's really hot, that can throw off your sleep patterns. Now let's talk about circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms are basically dependent upon where the sun is in the sky, how light, how dark, and how dark things are, uh, are out. And, and, and it, this is really, I could get into a lot of detail here, but just to keep it pretty basic, circadian rhythms, the thing that's most important with them is based on light and dark. And so have you ever tried sleeping in a very bright room? It's not easy to do. In a darker room, it's always easier. But here's how this works. Light that floods into your body first goes in through your retina, and that light then goes to what's called your hypothalamus. And your hypothalamus sends signals to your pineal gland that your body needs to produce melatonin. So the pineal gland in your brain starts secreting melatonin. Melatonin is known as your sleep hormone, so it's very, very important. Now what can happen, if it's not dark out or light out, if you're going to bed very late, or if you're trying to go to bed in the middle of the day and sleep, it'll really throw your body off because your body gets in rhythms and pattern. Your body likes uh, your body likes habits. Your body likes rhythms. And so, for instance, ideally, you'd go to bed at somewhere like you know nine, ten o'clock and wake up at six o'clock. So let's say eight hours, go to bed at ten, wake up at six. Your body could get used to that, your body would like that. Obviously when it's dark out, when naturally when the sun is down, that's when your body should be sleeping um, as much as possible and getting eight to ten hours of sleep a night is going to be best. But again, it's when the sun is down and when the sun is up, obviously that's when you should be sleeping. I know people have different work patterns. So you may be a person that works all night, you may be a student and everyone else around you is staying up late, but the more you can sleep when it's dark out, the better it's going to be for your body in adapting uh, to its surroundings. Also, in terms of circadian rhythm, some great studies have been done. They did a study on students and they found if students got outside in the light earlier on in the day, it helped their mood and actually helped them study and focus better. They said if you just wake up and you're just around just the general lights in your house, just those yellow lights, it's not, it really affects your mood and you can't focus as well throughout the day. There's something called full spectrum lights and those are lights that are more white in nature or give off almost a bluish color and those are similar to the colors of the sun. The sun actually gives off more of a blue light and if you get out in the sun, that actually naturally helps your body balance out those circadian rhythms 
and helps with your body's natural hormone response. If that's not happening, if you're not out in the sun at all during the day, you definitely want to get some full spectrum lights in your house, which means kind of the whiter, bluer light on the full spectrum chart. And you can even go to a website, it's called fullspectrumsolutions.com or look up full spectrum lights on the internet. But I know even a lot of stores today will have the full spectrum, the whiter, the bluer lights. Again, I would get those in your house and actually get around those in the morning. It's actually gonna help balance your circadian rhythms. Now what happens is while you're sleeping, melatonin should be high and a hormone called cortisol should be low. Melatonin is known as your anti-aging hormone. Cortisol is known as your aging hormone. What can happen if your emotional stress is very high throughout the day and you continually uh, stay stressed during the evening, cortisol will stay up and melatonin won't get as high as it should be. And because melatonin and cortisol are always going like this, it's like a, uh, like a teeter-totter, like a balance beam there. And so you've got to stay balanced with the two. When you're sleeping, melatonin should be high, cortisol should be low during the day. Cortisol should be a little higher, melatonin should be lower. But if you're stressed all day, that cortisol can keep going. So reducing stress is another key factor when it comes to actually sleeping better. So any way you can, write down the things that bring you joy, write down the things that stress you out. Build more joy and peace in your life. Try and eliminate the things that are causing stress in your life. Just write those down on a sheet of paper. That is also really gonna help. Uh, and last thing here I wanna talk about when it comes to circadian rhythms is taking a power nap. I've been doing a lot of research and, and I've been reading and they've said that taking a power nap, and that's a nap that lasts 15 to 40 minutes, ideally the nap would last about 30 minutes exactly or in that time frame, but if you can take a 30 minute nap in the middle of the day, studies have shown that you are way more productive, your energy levels go up later in the day. So a couple ways to do this, maybe during your lunch you go out and sit in your car and take a snooze. If you work around your home, hey lay down for about 20 to 30 minutes, just set your iPhone or watch to wake up at that time. But if you get a small little break in the middle of the day, it takes your brain about 15 to 20 minutes to reorganize itself and to kind of reshuffle. And so if you get about a 20 to 30 minute nap in the middle of the day, it's a great way to kind of rejuvenate yourself. It's called a power nap. And the other great thing about it is all studies have shown it doesn't throw off your circadian rhythms at all. One last thing about circadian rhythms, your body will detox and balance hormones at certain times. So typically they've shown from 11 to one o'clock in the morning, that's when your liver detoxes and some of your organs detox. Earlier in the morning, that's our, around uh, four to 6 a.m., that's when your body starts producing testosterone, your hormones start getting balanced as well. And so again, and, and so even your organs all have different circadian rhythms as well. It's pretty amazing how the body works. So, so here's your action steps for this week. Number one, try and go to bed a little earlier. If you can be in bed by 10, wake up by 6.37, that would be ideal. Everybody's different, but try and get eight hours of sleep. And then go through your life and see, hey, what am I doing? What could be throwing off my sleep patterns? Because remember, sleep is a massively important aspect of being healthy. Thanks so much for watching this week. I'll be back next week.